Welcome everyone uh, to our channel. Uh, this is Aladdin Bar, CEO of Robot Club, and today uh, we have with us uh, Bruce and Ronel from Kai's Clan. Uh, they are talking, going to talk about uh, their amazing robot that uh, we experienced uh, not long time ago, and uh, also at BET we met uh, Ronel, and uh, we got a great experience with that and great feedback uh, from educators. Um, and with that, without further ado, uh, let you guys introduce yourself. Hey there, I'm Bruce uh, from Kai's Clan, all the way from New Zealand, um, and I'm uh, the inventor of uh, Kai's Clan, along with a great team behind me. I'm Ronal, and um, I look after um, the sales, the resellers, and also teachers if they need any help. So, um, uh, yeah, I fell in love with Kai's Clan. I've done a couple of other games and fell in love with Kai's Clan, and um, that's why I'm here. Okay, thank you guys. So one of the um, the main things that you know I find really really interesting uh, uh, with this product is that we can actually do it you know remote and we do it uh, we can uh, let even kids at home especially in these days uh, that uh, almost every child you know around the globe um, is is just you know stuck at home uh, we we can just let them work with robots and work with um, uh, with the programs even while they are remote and not physically with the robot which is a great advantage and you know I can say I don't have any you know other similar uh, um, you know products out there that, that can do that so maybe you can talk a little bit about um, you know the, the background of uh, you know where this one came from or uh, you know why um, you know you chose to uh, develop it uh, in that way that it's accessible to everyone over the internet yeah sure um, so uh, I mean I, I'm I've been a tinkerer you know I've been pulling apart uh, products since I was, uh, you know, very small and, um, and I've been ripping apart and, you know, making a lot of failures along the way. And those have been my lessons. So I've learned a lot about electronics and programming and coding. And I just love technology. You know, I hack my own car for self-driving. Um, I'm just a geek. So um, I came across, uh, we, I was working with an education company, a 3D printing company. And going into schools and seeing, um, you know, uh, people doing coding. And I went to this one school with my, my son. Uh, he was supposed to be learning coding. And the teacher was there. And all the kids were on their thumbs. And this was a coding lesson. I'm like, this is not right. You know, something's wrong here. So um, I went back and we spoke to some engineers. And we said, hey, let's, let's pull out all the modern technology that's being used today and put it into a, a box and see what we get. And that's what we've got with Kai's clan. Oh, that's great. I mean, every, everything that comes from passion, I know that because I, you know, worked with uh, robots myself uh, and I played with them and, and build them. Everything that comes from, from passion is like 10 times better, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so why focusing on education? Why not uh, going, uh, you know, to other markets like entertainment or, you know, uh, all kinds of like a home, um, you know, uh, education, these kind of things? Well, um, you know, why education? Why not uh, deliver a consumer product, you know? Yeah. I, I, just, I, I just got a big passion on trying to prepare students for the next uh, wave. You know, with uh, robotics and all of the technologies that were available, um, you know, it's no longer a future thing that robots are going to replace jobs. They already are. I mean, even in New Zealand, we had a concrete company, Concrete, and, you know, they went from 700 staff to 140 and tripled their production. Wow. You know, robots don't complain about not pitching yeah. up or, you know, so... So we really, you know, my passion is about, um, you know, getting our students ready. Uh, you know, they're already behind and we need to really have a strong push on uh, technologies in the classroom and really getting kids to understand what those are. Yeah, I mean, I always say, I mean, you know, we try to prepare our students to the 21st century, but hey, we're 20 years into the 21st century already. And yeah. you know, these kids will graduate in 2030 probably. Um, so, you know, they should be better prepared. As you said, I mean, it's exactly. happening today. Exactly, exactly. And that's what uh, we focused around with Kai's clan is we wanted a toolbox uh, for the teacher. 
So the teacher has a toolbox and they go, hey, I want to do robotics. Oh, I want to do coding. Oh, I want to do VR. I want to, you know, so we've got all the tools in one product and it's up to the teacher or up to the students what tools they want to uh, use to, to learn these new technologies. Gotcha. Can you talk a little bit about the, the robots and the tools and the accessories that come with it? Well, I mean, you know, this, uh, this little yellow robot here, um, actually, it's probably the smallest feature of our toolbox of, of, of Kai's clan. Um, it's got some little lights on it. And, you know, it looks like any other robot on the market, pretty much, you know. Uh, it, uh, it's pretty cool. Though. Um, but, yeah, it's just another robot. So, but how is Kai's clan uh, different? Well, you know, I can, I can show you um, just quickly. Um, what, what you can do with Kai's Clan and how is Kai's Clan different to uh, any other robot product on the market? Well, the difference is uh, Kai's Clan allows students or teachers to create the characters that they're teaching. So if you're doing a history lesson and you want guns and all sorts of things in there, you can do that and design those in Minecraft or Tinkercad and then just click in Tinkercad, send to Kai's Clan. And what that does then is send um, that character into our, into our iPad uh, or Android app. And then kids can then go and animate that through our coding interface. Hmm. So it's, it's very easy for, uh, for kids to learn, not just coding a robot, but they can also learn to um, you know, do animations and things like that. So, you know, Kai's Clan is, like I said, it's a toolbox and it's really got so much VR and, AR and uh, you know sensors and it's it's gotcha. it's pretty pretty much got everything in it, but easy to use with a very low floor and a high ceiling. Uh, so basically, what you're saying is that um, uh, the robots are just uh, like a physical medium, but the important thing is what the uh, like the virtual layer that we are adding on top of that. So we can transport exactly. the students to Mars, to uh, Second World War, uh, or you know any other environment just by designing this environment and the robot just the embodiment of that motion or this uh you know fight if, you, if it's a war or something uh like in the real world but you know what they see is the like on the screen what they see is the actual uh, like a character that they design which is pretty unique that that's that's exactly you got that 100 percent correct that is exactly right and uh we have a mat on the floor and that mat is uh, tied to the, the virtual world. So instead of just going, hey, uh, as a teacher, say, hey, to a student, code this robot to move along this line as if you were in a war or as if you're in a Mars, right? But now we actually say, hey, code your Mars rover mm -hmm. to go to the space station and go and uh, top yeah. up the water and put out a fire. And all of those things can be done in the virtual world. So you see a Mars rover, you see the fire, you see the space station, and you're on Mars. But when you're moving your virtual character, your physical character is tied. So wherever your physical character goes, the virtual environment is matched. I got you. And are there any like accessories or um, you know other uh, products that we can attach to the robots, or you know, is it yes. what it is? So um, we've got um, a bunch of sensors uh, and we've made it very easy uh, for sensors. So this is our small sensor pack that we include mm -hmm. in the kit. Um, but it's like, you know, for a teacher to start uh, learning or teaching Arduino, just to link an LED, uh, for most teachers, this can be quite challenging. And for the students to go, oh, I, I, I made an LED blink. And I spent a whole lesson to do this. And it's like, you know, really like it's not, I'm not achieving a lot. Um, so we said, okay, well, before you get to Arduino, use Kai's clan, single click, choose what sensor you want to do, whether it's LED light or temperature sensor, and you plug it into color-coded cable and it's active. So if you want to see what the temperature is in, in another country, you can easily just plug in a temperature sensor in the back of the robot, it's color coded, one click on the interface, and you then got a temperature sensor on your robot. Now the beauty of Kai's Clan is because it's online, 
it's in the cloud, it's full multiplayer, it doesn't matter where in the world you are, you can drive the robot, you can see its scent, temperature sensor, you can turn on a water pump. I mean, our water pump, um, you know, it's one click, choose water pump, plug it in, and you've got a water pump uh, running. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where in the world you are with Kai's clan, you can be, you know, coding, you could have your, your, your robots in your house as a teacher, and then all your students who are all remote can be, you know, using and coding those robots. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to, you know, vouch for that. We just got uh, a training a few weeks ago um, uh, during this uh, corona shutdown thing. And, uh, you know, everyone at home, uh, all our team at home, we have our customer success team and our developers and, you know, me and, you know, you guys in New Zealand. And, you know, we were driving robots on your floor in New Zealand from California and from different houses. And it was like pretty like mind, you know, blowing, like, what is that? How does it even work? And that's, that's great. And I think this is, you know, a great uh, added value uh, for, for educators that, you know, it, it's simple and it works literally from anywhere in the world. Um, and then, you know, personally, I was impressed by, by that. Um, so yeah, good, good job on that. Oh, thank I you very much. I think what's amazing is about the collaboration, like we're saying, you know, you can be anywhere in the world and we really would love to see schools to actually start working together. You know, districts, um, when you buy a classroom kit, you know, you get two mats. So why, you know, you can have a mass mat in the one school and in the other school and you can combine it and all of a sudden you can see 12 robots on the mat all competing or doing different things. So it's a multiplayer coding platform. Yeah, got you. Yeah, it's perfect, and it's brilliant, and it's working. I mean, that's the best thing here. Um, well, it's, you know, it was a, it was, a, it's taken three years of development uh, with a team of developers to get the product to where it is today. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. To make it so smooth, I mean, I can appreciate the the hard work and how much work <laughs> was put into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Let's talk about uh, the programming a little bit. So I saw a little bit of uh, uh, like block-based uh, programming. Is this uh, like scratch base, scratch base, or Blockly, or something unique? Yeah, it's yeah. So our coding interface, we had to uh, uh, really make it quite unique because we needed a collaborative uh, method of coding, and pretty much no one's done this in the world before. Uh, being able to have students collaboratively code on a project. It's been done in other uh, aspects, but not in a block-based uh, system. So we based it on Google Blockly. So it's, a, it's a, like a cross between Scratch and Blockly, if you like. And then we've got JavaScript and we're adding on Python later as well. So we've got teacher management in there, so you can manage all your, your, your students. Uh, we've got new things coming on where we can remote control the teacher can take over control of a student's, um, you know, coding interface to correct any issues they've got or help mm. one student could help another student. Okay. And that's very important when you're coding remotely and a student is struggling, you know, what can the teacher do to help that uh, student? So what we'll be able to do is the teacher will be able to take over control of that uh, student's uh, coding interface, fix a problem and then release it for the student to carry on. So we've got a lot of things planned for the future with Kai's clan. Um, you know, our development team are all working on next, next yeah. versions. We support BBC Microbit. We put that onto the internet via Kai's mm -hmm. clan. So, and we're extending out, we support over 30 different types of sensors or add-ons, third party sensors or add-ons. Yeah, that's great. So, it can seem very overwhelming, but if you just want to drive a robot forwards, left, right, very basic things, we've got a very low floor, so it's very easy to get started. And then if you want to take this into the first year of university and do really advanced logarithms, uh, you can do that as well. Gotcha. So, um, you know, before I jump into uh, higher education, uh, you, you mentioned teachers and the ability to intervene and correct the code and all that. What resources are you providing for, for teachers in terms of, uh, you know, either curriculum or, you know, worksheets or, you know, lesson plans or anything around? Yeah, that? so um, 
So when we did the research for uh, designing curriculum and lesson plans, we found that a lot of the, the lessons and the, the, the curriculum were outside of the product that you're currently using. And this meant that you had to be you're coding and then you're switching to a lesson, okay? So what we did is we integrated that lesson inside our application so you don't have to leave the application to learn what the lesson is. Now, to go back to your question, is we have over 35 uh, different uh, lessons mm -hmm. uh, from Mars to busy bees to uh, battles and, and all of these are lined with some virtual reality, augmented reality. So we've got all these lessons. We are aligning them to ISTE standards as well. Got you. So uh, which age group are you targeting with this, you know, with the lesson plans? From seven years old, uh, mm -hmm. all the way up to the first years, probably high school is a realistic way, you know, first, uh, first few years of high school. I got you. And you mentioned that uh, like more, call it hardcore, uh, hardcore coding is coming up, like Python, um, yes, Java, yeah. JavaScript, well, what's, what's in the pipeline? We've got JavaScript already as a oh. preview only though, but, um, and we've got Python coming up and those will be editable. Uh, in a few months' time, yeah. Got you. So students will be able to use their own development environment, so you know, Eclipse or whatnot. And yeah, it's not a simple task because we are a multiplayer environment mm -hmm. uh, because students are, you know, using it now. That and then what makes it even more complicated as well in that environment is when you start having two schools uh, competing against each other in a real live. Uh, situation. So we'll start releasing competitions as well because we are, are an online platform and yeah. it's very easy for us to do online competitive uh, challenges. Got you. So let's say I'm a teacher, you know, I heard about that, uh, you know, I'm intrigued, I want to uh, get started. Uh, are there any prerequisites either for me as a teacher or for my students? What do I need to know before starting with your program? Well, uh, what you can do is just jump into one of our free online lessons that we offer. We, just like what you, you were saying earlier, where you jump in and you can code a robot sitting in New Zealand. Yep. Uh, that's been very popular and we're doing a lot of those. Um, I've been up since 6 a.m. this morning doing, doing these uh, lessons. Um, so that's probably the first thing to get a taste on, on Kai's Clan because it can seem very overwhelming but it doesn't have to be. And like I said, it is a toolbox. So if you just want to use a spanner and you, you don't, you don't have to do the whole AR, the VR sure. sensors, you can just like keep it simple and just do some simple coding to get started. I got you. And then, and then uh, we sell a pack, you know, of four robots or a dozen robots and that en enables the whole classroom to, to work. Got you. Um, and what would you say is the uh, like expected outcome from uh, you know participating as a student participating in this program? What what are we trying to teach them uh, other than having fun with AR and robotics and all of that? Well, I think uh, I think it, the thing is with uh, every student is unique. Every student has their own learning uh, types and abilities and their own passions. You know. I've got my own passion about technologies and I love that. But when I come to history, I'm like, oh, you know, I yeah. shut down. So, um, so we know every student's got their own, uh, you know, skill sets. And that's the nice thing with Kai's clan because it's got so many options in it. You know, one student can say, hey, I want to be coding the Unity side of the, of the app. And they can go through that because we've got a Unity app, um, yeah. you know, that allows us to code in Unity so they can do the game development kind of stuff gotcha. or one student's doing census so you know so it's it's really up to the student which you know which way they want to go with this also think and what skills also, they learn for the future uh, yeah i also think what we're doing is we're teaching kids how to look at um, project and inquiry based learning um you know gone are the days where teachers sort of say do this do this it is now really student driven yeah. So you can add your own project, actually. You don't have to follow our lessons. You can add your own and then share it in the community page. So I really think it is a chance here to give students the ability to be creative 
from designing their own um, design or their own character all the way to, well, you know, how's the different lesson, how's the lesson going to roll out and what are the different roles that we can play. I got you. And as a student, can I work uh, like only on the virtual side of that? So only the online version without, you know, being connected to a real robot? Uh, you can to a, to a degree, but you still need the mat. Um, so we, we're, we're both a physical and a virtual product. So this does mean that you still have to have a physical mat somewhere with a teacher or at home or. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, that, that's great. Sounds, sounds really good. So, um, you know, what's in the pipeline for that? Well, what's coming up next? So you mentioned Python. That's one, one thing for sure. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, what's next is we've really got to work. We've done, we've got a lot of technology in this product and uh, we're still trying to make it easier. Making something complicated easy is complicated. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we are trying to make it easier and better. We are polishing our, um, our sandbox, uh, you know, VR, AR app at the moment. So that's going to take a little bit of time. And that's like a full kind of block-based coding interface into Unity. Um, so that's now, you know, adding a whole thing where, you know, you're teaching your own lesson. Yeah. Whatever that lesson might be, uh, it might be on the new, um, in, you know, on the coronavirus. Uh, and then you can have viruses and you can have robots infecting other robots. And we're not just simulating these as robots, but these are human beings being infected with other yeah human beings when they come into contact with another robot because the human and the robot sure. are basically, yeah. So, you know, we've got, we've just finished that lesson plan just about, um, and then we'll make a video on that and show that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. We, so, we're yeah, also so doing think, translations. Sorry, Bruce. We're also looking yeah. at translations. So one of the first ones will probably be Spanish. Um, and I believe there's obviously a big market for the for a Spanish version. So um, hopefully in a couple of months' time we'll be able to have Kai span also in Spanish. Yeah, especially in the US. Um, I mean, around half of the population, the school population, uh, speaks Spanish. So we definitely need that. That's great. So yeah. you know, I, I mentioned what I like about that. You know, the ability to work with that around the world. You know, where, wherever you are, that's awesome. Uh, but from your experience, what would you say the most exciting, you know, feature or features uh, of the software or the hardware or any combination between them? Where do you see the most, you know, excitement coming from? Um, from uh, the most excitement, the, uh, if a person sees the product the first time, they love the aspect that there's a physical object on the floor or a robot or a mm -hmm. QR code. And then they love that it's tied to the virtual because, you know, a lot of the stuff is all games and there's no physical attachment when you're doing learning. So it's all on the screen and it's not off the screen or it's all off the screen. and It's not on the screen. So we do that whole, um, you know, that, that marriage between the physical world and the virtual world are tied together. And I think that's what makes our product very unique. Um, so if the, if a kindergarten kid wants to just, push the robot around on the mat, he can do that and see in the virtual world what he's doing. Gotcha. Now, it's, it's amazing to see primary school kids learn navigation without being taught navigation because on our mat, we've got an X and Y coordinate. Now, when yeah. they push that, when they code that robot to move around, you place a chocolate in a particular coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> it's always positive it's enforcement, right? <laughs> exactly. And it's amazing. Like you just go, okay, open grippers, go and grab the chocolate at this X and Y coordinate because we're using X and Y coordinates yeah, all yeah. the time. So, and, and that's another unique part of our product is most robotic project, you know, uh, products out in the market or line following. They follow this black line. Yeah. Black line was invented 24 years ago. Yeah. And we're still teaching it. But if you look at an Amazon warehouse, Alibaba warehouse, sure. you won't see any black lines. So we've, you know, and that's was my, my big thing around inventing this product was let's use technology that's being used in the industry. So Amazon yeah. warehouse use the same uh, little QR codes like mm -hmm. this. 
They have them on the floor. We have them on the roof of the robot. Yeah. Um, so it's exactly the same kind of setup. Uh, we also have an Amazon warehouse simulation. Oh, nice. So the whole uh, thing just like shuffles, the inventory shuffles around and everything. Yeah, yeah, you receive a product order. You've got to go and collect that from, you've got to order that in from the supplier. It's got to go through the whole uh, logistics supply chain. And that's one of our more advanced um, new thing. And it comes with a mat as well. It's great, great. Yeah, um, anything else you want to share uh, with our viewers? Uh, anything that you think uh, we missed? No, I think, I think the, the big thing is, you know, get a demo and we'll show you all the different features and actually let you get on and code your robot. And I think that's where people see the, ex you know, the excitement when they code something, how it comes to life and then they can see the different mats and things and then they can decide after that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think just to summarize, Kai's plan is a toolbox, like I said, and it, it just depends. You can start very easy. If you've done the B bots, you can use Kai's plan, yeah. you know. Um, to move forward, you just drag a block, move forward, click run. So it is that simple or advanced, depending on how far you want to take it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Great. Uh, thank you, uh, Bruce and Ronell. I really appreciate your time. Uh, hope you stay safe uh, in this uh, virus madness uh, that's going out there. Um, and uh, yeah, if anyone uh, wants to learn more, uh, feel free to reach out to us or to uh, the guys here. And we'll be more than happy to give you a demo and you know get you on board this uh, exciting program. Thank you and have a good day. Thanks, Thanks very, very much. much. Thanks.